We are family. We are friends. No matter what you're going through, you can win. You're my brother and sister too. You're never alone. I'm here for Come on, put your hands together. We thank God for all of you who have come to noon Bible class. Amen. And we want to continue to pray that the Lord would continue to add to this particular Bible class that we might grow in the Lord. Amen. <clears throat> and so uh, just keep that on your prayer list, and I appreciate it. Uh, we are going to start in Genesis chapter 6. Uh, basically, we've been talking about um, the generation of Seth, and um, I'm hoping that as we move forward with the information that you bring the information with you because all of this stems from Cain and Abel, okay, because you find out that in the story of Cain and Abel, Genesis chapter 4, you have Cain who is the unrighteous seed and you have Abel who was the righteous seed, right? And uh, it is God's way of uh, representing himself in the earth um, whereas Cain kills Abel, right, which means the example of righteousness disappears because when Abel disappears, the example and the expression of God's love and example disappears, which means that when there is no presence of goodness, evil runs rampant. Does that make, it, that make any sense? Okay, and so you find out that after Cain uh, kills his brother and he, you know, deals with God and God deals with him, uh, evil begins to run rapid because um, there is no example of what righteousness is. Cain expresses himself in rebellion against God, and all you see now is evil, all right? And how many know that evil being expressed in the behavior of a human being is what causes the generational curse? I'll wait for the rest of y'all, Okay. And we have to understand that our children listen, uh, they, they do more than what they, uh, when we tell them to do stuff, they would rather do what they see than do what they're told. And so what you find out is that because Cain and his family line, um, Cain is a representative of that which is evil, so everything that is produced after him learns evil behavior, so evil spreads throughout and you'll find out Lamich, who is, is, is an extension of Cain's um, genealogy, he comes and he does the same thing that Cain does. He kills a young man, <clears throat> and you, he tells about, you know, uh, I think it talks about him having two wives, okay? And what, and what that shows us is that it shows us that the, the, the mind and the, the mentality of men have been getting uh, even more evil because there is nowhere in the scriptures that God allows for a man to have two wives. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. God made Adam and Eve. He didn't make Adam, Eve, and, and Jackie. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? And so nowhere in, in the Bible does it even lens uh, for, for a man to have two wives, but what it shows you is how wicked we have become. Okay, and that's what it really shows. And so uh, I don't know if people even see it, but, you know, to point it out, he has two wives and he tells them about what he had done and then it goes from that. And so um, that's, that gets us to chapter five, all right, where God chooses um, to use Adam and Eve to produce Seth, all right? And Seth comes into this world as the righteous seed of God, Okay. After that, you find in chapter 5, the genealogy of those men that were righteous. And I want you all to pay uh, some uh, attention to uh, how they verbalize um, these, these righteous men. And this is how you know they, they are righteous. Let's just read verse 7, chapter 5, verse 7. 
And Seth lived after he had begotten Enos 800 and what? How many years? Now watch what the Bible says. And he begat what? Sons and daughters, all right? And so the question is, if he begot sons and daughters, why aren't the sons represented in his line? Okay? And it's only because those sons and daughters who he had were not people of righteousness. Even though he had them, they were not people who was about God's agenda. That's why, you know, uh, it talks about Enos, all right, because Enos became that individual who expressed the righteousness and the characteristics of God. That's why he is in this genealogy. And every man that is represented in this genealogy is represented because they were men of God, all right? But all of the men of God had other sons, but they just did not follow God. Are y'all following that? All right. And so everybody you see in chapter five are quote unquote sons of God. They were men that followed God. All right. Yes, ma'am. That's correct. All right, because what God is trying to establish and what I want to show you very clearly is that God is interested in having someone, all right, who will stand their grounds in an evil world and represents him everywhere they go. He wants to find a people, a people or a person who becomes a people, all right, that will stand up for God Anywhere you go, and, and when I mean stand up for God, not to argue with these people about theology and all that kind of stuff, but to, but to represent the righteousness of God, the love of God, the character of God, to do right in spite of what everybody else is doing, not to talk about other folks when other people entered into all of that mess, not to get into that craziness, but to be a peacemaker. You understand what I'm saying? So God is searching for that individual. Every day we wake up, God is looking for somebody that's willing to stand up and say, I know what y'all doing, but I refuse to. Amen. Why? Because I am a child of the living God and I cannot afford to allow my relationship with God to be spoiled by y'all evil. You understand? Know and that's what God tells him. I said, that's what God is looking for, y'all. All right, and, and we have to understand in the midst of all of this, you'll see it from time after time, after story after story, God keeps going and finding that person who will do that which is right in the midst of evil people. Okay, so that's what you see, all right? And so we're getting ready to start in chapter 6, all right? Verse 1 is where we're going to start, and we're going to start reading, and uh, hopefully we can get through uh, most of this if we can. All right, verse uh, 1, chapter 6. Let's read. On the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God, that they were fair, and that they took all right. And so we see that the sons of God uh, saw the daughters of men that they were pretty, all right, and they took them wives of all which they chose. Are y'all seeing that? And so you find out that the sons of God are those individuals who represented God in chapter 5. Are y'all following that? Okay, following. And the daughters of men are those daughters who were birthed by men who were evil. All right, uh, and even if they weren't Cain's uh, sons, and uh, if it wasn't Cain's daughters, they were still evil men, because all of the all of the righteous men are represented in chapter five, because they had sons too, they just was not righteous sons. You follow what I'm saying? And so uh, it's easy to divide it for me because all you see is uh, righteous and not righteous. Non-righteous, if you will, okay? And so uh, you find out that these sons of God, who were righteous men of God, all right, end up marrying unrighteous women. Let me say it again. You have the sons of God who ends up marrying unrighteous women. 
okay? You had people who loved God, and they had people who did not love God, all right? The scripture says, don't be unequally yoked, okay? And I don't know for the life of me why people feel like that they can change somebody. I, I don't understand. I just, I don't, and, 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 and my argument is very simple. If God can't change them, I'm just trying to help y'all. If God can't change them, then what makes you think you can? You see what I'm saying? And so at the end of the day, that's why you have to let God do what God going to do. And if they ain't willing to change for God, tell somebody, say, they just making a deceptive, they, they are making a deceptive presentation to you. All right? They'll make you look like what you want until you take what you want and then it becomes what it is. Hello, somebody? All right? They'll come to church with you and play the role as long as they chase it. Right. Tell somebody, say, but the moment they catch the fish, <laughs> you're going to find the devil. Amen. I'm, tell, I'm just trying to tell you how it is, man, and y'all can sit and act like this ain't what we do. Tell somebody, say, don't, don't lie to yourself if you're going to, don't lie to yourself. We send, we send the representative because we don't want nobody to know just how ugly we truly is, okay? And so that's what we do, all right? And you have to be careful when you deal with people. If you don't love God, then let us not even try to play like we're going to get this thing together, okay? And y'all, I can say this a million times, and y'all going to hear me, but y'all ain't going to hear me because if he find all your rationale, go out the window. If she find all your rationale, go out the window. All right, but I'm going to tell you something. The worst thing you can do is marry a fine man that, got, that don't have a heart. Amen. Come on now. Amen. Come on here. The worst thing you can do is marry a fine woman who don't love Jesus, okay? You talking about misery. You talking about living in your own house in hell, okay? And that's what we want to talk about is that when we pursue these relationships, we got to be cognizant of the fact that we just can't choose anybody. We have to choose somebody who is on the same mindset, the same focus, and the same road, amen, so that when we walk, we can walk together. Amen. Hello, somebody. All right. Tell somebody, I say, most of, the, most of the marriages, before they even get married, already divorced. All right. Because when you marry somebody who is not compatible to you, all right, you're going into a thing with a divorce knowing you're trying to fix something that, ain't, they, that can't never be fixed. Okay, and we, and we fool ourselves into believing we can make a difference. All right, tell somebody, say, the only difference you can make is a difference in your life. You cannot change another person's mind. Hello, somebody. Okay, and so let's be clear about this. Okay, if you're going to hook up with somebody, hook up with somebody and, and tell somebody, say, and the first thing before you hook up with anybody, you need to make sure. Say it again, mama. Be friends. All right? Because friends allow you to see them in operation with no obligation. Because as long as I, it, listen, listen, as long as I think you're pursuing me, then I'm going to show you what you want to see. If we just friends, I ain't got nothing, I ain't got nothing, <laughs> we just, we just, and I ain't talking about them kind of friends like y'all like 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 y'all call friends friends with benefit. I call them bed partners. I don't know what y'all call them. Okay, I'm talking about just straight up friends. Where you buy your lunch, I buy my lunch. You drive your car, I drive my car. You live in your house, I live in my house. Okay, them the kind of friends. I ain't talking about the kind of friends, you know, y'all got a new label on y'all friends. and I ain't what I'm talking about. I ain't talking about that, okay? And so the point I'm trying to make is, is that it gives you the opportunity to look at a person, to find out who they are before you ever get involved with a person, all right? Because everybody that looks sane ain't. I'll say it again. Everybody that looks sane, we got more mental cases here after the pandemic. Okay, mental illness is running rampant. 
Okay? And people are crazy out here. All right? When I say they crazy, I mean they crazy. Okay? And they look normal. I say they look normal. But something wrong mentally. Do you understand? And so you tell somebody, say, and you have to be careful how you approach people. Okay? That's why, listen, that's why I tell y'all to be kind to everybody. Okay? Because you don't know who, you, who you're dealing with. Okay? And so at the end of the day, uh, that was my first lesson. So uh, I want y'all to understand that these men, righteous men, got corrupted by unrighteous women. All right? Because they did not select um, carefully. You know what I'm saying? And you have to be, as a, as a child of God, you have to be careful who you select to be a part of your life, period. All right? Because uh, at the end of the day, the devil ain't playing fair. He's always got people on assignments. All right? And we have to be cautious of the fact that we are in the enemy's territory. Tell somebody, say, I live behind the enemy line. Okay, and you have to be cognizant of that every moment of your life or you're going to end up getting caught in the trap. Okay, and so at the end of the day, don't, don't, ever, don't ever lose sight of the fact that you work for the Lord and you, in, and you are in the enemy's ter territory. And he's going to try to do everything he dan can to trap you or to get you caught up because the first thing he wants to do is to stop you from doing what you're doing. Okay, and so you have to be smart about what's going on. Verse 2, you ready? Let's read. All right. And so the second thing I want to tell you about it is that tell somebody, say, and when you select a mate, and when you select a mate, and when you select a mate, <laughs> don't use the criteria of beauty. Why, Reverend? I'm, bit, I'm, I'm about to tell you. Because the devil was the prettiest thing that you ever seen. Beauty should never be your criteria. Tell somebody, say, character should. If he ain't going to take care of the baby he got, what make you think he's going to take care of the baby you get? Don't nobody, don't nobody want, I guess don't nobody want to talk to me. I don't nobody talk to me. All right? Tell somebody, say, when the devil shows up, he ain't going to show up in a red suit with a fork with a long tail, baby. Oh, she going to be fine. <laughs> Are y'all laughing, man? He going to be the, he gonna be the handsomest thing you've ever seen in your life. And if you let your flesh go after it, tell somebody, say, you best to beware. Okay, and say so y'all laughing because y'all know y'all been there and done that. See, okay, I'm just I'm just trying to help people understand that for those who ain't got caught in it yet, you know, to be a little wiser as you pursue. Amen. Because at the end of the day, he does not show up in a red suit with a tail and a long long tail and a fork. He shows up in Prada, Gucci. Louis Vuitton, what's the rest, what's the rest of them, them, okay? I mean, talk about, okay? They were fair, the Bible says. They were attractive, okay? And tell somebody, say, and if you go after somebody just because they're attractive, you're about to fall into the trap. Because what you want to find out is their character. Are y'all listening to me? How do you find out a person's character? Tell somebody, say, learn the word friends. You befriend them. You, you, learn, you learn to figure out who they are without them trying to convince you that there's something else. I'm, this is me. I'm just who I am. Okay? And so friendship don't, don't, don't require obligation. And so you can see them up close. Amen? All right, verse 3, let's read. Have y'all ever, have y'all noticed that uh, when you read from 
uh, in, the, in the genealogies that, that every time you start reading in the genealogies, you'll find out that the, the time of man's life on earth is being shortened. Have y'all ever noticed that? You, know, you notice it. Uh, I think Methuselah was like 869 years, and I think the longest individual. But if you keep coming through those genealogies, you'll find out that as the generations, you know, produce themselves, the lifespan starts to shorten. All right? Are the, do y'all understand that? Okay? Because what is happening here is that evil has become so rampant that it is shortening the lifespan of individuals because the lifespan of a person is extended when the love of God or the spirit of God is present. Amen. Okay. Because the spirit of God and the love of God is what God intended for your house body to possess. Anything else other than that speeds up the death process. Like unforgiveness. Amen. Jealousy. Anger. Hatred. All of those emotions that are not the expression of love speeds up your death process. Okay? And that's why if you go through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, God is trying to get us to do two things. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, and mind. Love thy as ourself. And he even goes so far to say, if you got enemies, love them too. Because the agenda of the child of God is to love, which means that if you learn to love really genuinely, it means it extends your lifespan. Okay? Most of us are dying because we mean it. We don't even recognize it. Okay? And we can't get along with nobody. Can't nobody get along with us. Can't stay in the same room with nobody. We can't cooperate with nobody. Just mean. Just, just mean. And then wonder why you're sick all the time. Don't nobody want to say nothing to me, huh? Tell someone, say, your body was not designed to hold negative emotions. Listen, let me, let me ask this question, and maybe you'll understand what I'm talking about. Have you ever done something good and felt what it feels like after you do the deed? What does it feel like? Feel like you're on some crack or something, don't you? <laughs> now, y'all laughing, but I'm trying to help you understand what's going on. The endorphins that, that is released in your body when you do good and you know you've done good, it releases life to your body. That's what you're feeling. And tell somebody, say, and what happens if you do that every day? All day. Tell somebody, say, you walk around high on life. Y'all, see, y'all like, uh, see, I'm trying to help y'all learn to live, man. I'm trying to, I'm trying, it's, it's, it's like smoking weed. If y'all ever been there, if y'all, y'all ain't never been there, y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm saying, you have, you have, tell somebody, I say, and, and this is natural. The weed ain't natural no more. I'm sorry, I, don't, I don't know what that is. But, but I'm saying this, these natural behaviors to be nice and to do nice things, to bless somebody, gives you this, this, this feeling, man, that, that you just high on life. I'm just glad I'm alive and the Lord has blessed me. He woke me up this morning and every time I come into somebody's presence, I want to bless somebody. I want to do some good somebody because when I walk away, I feel like I'm walking on air. I'm walking on, I'm walking on top of the world. Tell somebody, I say, and that's how you were supposed to feel every day of your life. All right? That's what God intended for your life. All right? And we have to learn that the more we practice good and the more we do good, we get that feeling. And that feeling is what actually gives us vibrant and life to this body. All right? And that's what I need y'all to see, okay? Because the, the more you let these negative emotions uh, abide in your body, it speeds up your death rate. Okay? And that's why forgiveness is a big issue. Because you got to get some of that stuff out of you. I had, did, I, did, did y'all hear what I said? You got to get that stuff 
inside of you, okay? Because let's just be honest. When you talk about forgiveness, the people you forgive, most of them only know you mad. And then the second part of that is, if they know, they don't care. And who's getting sick behind the emotions of caring unforgiveness? Who's been affected? The person you mad at or the person who's being mad? The person, see what I'm saying? And so forgiveness ain't even for the person you forgive. It's to release you from prison. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay. It helps you to be able to be free and filled with love and to be able to express your love and tell somebody, say, and when the Lord sends somebody else in my life, I can love them, all right, like I want to be loved. Do you understand what I'm saying? Tell somebody, say, you can't do that when you, you know, walking away from one relationship wounded and then you try to get into another relationship to forget the relationship you just left and you still wounded and you're going to bring those wounds into the relationship you just brought into. Now you're going to punish him for what he did. You're going to punish her for what she did. You know what I'm saying? Tell somebody, say, you got to let that stuff go. You got to forgive. You got to let that stuff go. You got to heal and forgive or, or forgive while you heal. However you want to do it, okay? But you got to do it, okay? Because you end up uh, stifling your happiness when you don't learn to forgive, all right? And so let us read, because I, I didn't mean to get caught up in all that. All right, verse 4, let's read. And there were giants in the earth in those days. All right, and we always, and uh, we always have that issue about, you know, uh, the sons of man being interpreted as angels. All right, and um, I want you to be clear that when you read the context of this particular presentation, the context of this presentation is that chapter five is the sons of God, not angels. Okay. The argument is, is that most theologians think that, uh, and some, some people think that the sons of God were angels who interacted with the daughters of man and they came out with giants. Y'all have, y'all, y'all, y'all heard that before? Y'all heard that before? Okay. Listen, uh, somebody find the scripture for me and I, I didn't uh, pull it up, but um, about um, you error because you don't know the scriptures. Because the angels in heaven are not given in marriage, is what is what the scripture says, and um, and you have to understand what what Jesus means when he expresses that, right? In heaven, angels are not given in marriage, because the only way to be given in marriage is to be able to have sex. So that means angels don't have the ability to have sex. Amen. Y'all quiet. What's wrong? Find the scripture for me. So, so Matthew, let me see. Matthew 20 what? 22 and 30. All right. Let's go to Matthew 22 and 30. Thank you. Matthew 22 and 30. Okay, 29, we'll start in 29 when Jesus starts to talk. All right, you got it? 29? All right, let's read. You do error, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. For in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, And the part you need to pay attention to is they are as angels. Because what he's, what he's, what he's referring to is that the people who are in the res- resurrection are going to be like the angels. And when he says like the angels, he says that the angels are not given in marriage because they don't have the ability to have sex. 
all right? And that's my argument when it comes to the angels coming down having sex with, with the women, all right? Because what would stop the devil from building a massive army of giants if that could really happen? Y'all quiet, what's wrong? All right? And so at the end of the day, uh, write that down, uh, keep it with you, read it, go back home and check it out if you want to. Um, because in the days of, of the biblical days, you could not get married if you did not have sex with the individual, okay? Because that was how they married one another. When you read in the Old Testament when J Jacob and all of them got married, they went into a tent. They had a, fest they had a feast that night. They got drunk. They went into a tent, and the next day they were married. There was no preacher. There was no judge. They were mad. They went in the tent that night. They were drunk. They went in the tent. And when they came out, they were married. There was no preacher in that time about. <laughs> Dearly beloved, we're gathered here today in this little tent to see. <laughs> but I'm just trying to show you, this is how they got married. All right? And you need to understand that. And so uh, that's how uh, 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 Jacob got, uh, got with Leah. I think it was Leah. It was Leah. That's how, that's how he ended up with Leah. He didn't want to marry Leah. He was after Rachel. He chased Rachel for, for seven years. All right? And the daddy switched the moment. So the moment he slept with her, now even though he didn't want to marry her, the moment he slept with her, she became his wife. Then he had to turn around and work another some years to get Rachel the one he actually wanted. So he had two wives. Do you see what just happened? Okay. And so even though he didn't want to be with Leah, she slept with him. And when she slept with him and when he slept with her, his obligation was he had to take care of her. Now how many husbands you got? How many wives you got? We ain't going to answer that. That was just a rhetorical question for you to think about. I ain't going to tell you how many wives I got. <laughs> okay? And y'all, and we laughing, and we laughing. But, but, but God in his infinite wisdom did something in this thing called sex. And we, do, and, and we take it and we don't, we don't use it correctly. We don't use it righteously. And we don't understand that that's why people get so emotional when, when sex happens. I'm waiting for the rest of them to catch up. Okay? Because you have to understand when, when, when we deal with the emotions, men are different than women. And this is going to be the best way I'll be able to explain it to you. Men are like chickens. They can, they can lay eggs and don't die. But women are like hogs. In order for me to get your bacon, you got to die. I can't, I can't eat bacon from the hog if the hog ain't willing to give their whole life. Amen. But you can eat my eggs and I can still be alive after you finish eating them. Are y'all listening to me? I'm trying to help somebody understand the psychological part of this. All right, and you want to know why they throwing bricks through your window? <laughs> I done laid down my whole life for you, Negro, and you gonna walk away and act like you didn't do this? Tell you, it's a psychological thing, and we don't understand how important it is. And that's why you have to keep yourself. If you are a virgin, be proud of it. Amen. 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 See, ain't nobody saying amen no more. <laughs> amen. I don't even know if we know what that is no more. A virgin. Does anybody know what a virgin is anymore? Okay. We don't even know what that. They started. They started 11 and 12 now. They started before then. But I'm. I'm just trying to give the benefit of the doubt. 11 and 12. Okay, but the bottom line is, y'all, we don't even, we don't, we don't cherish that anymore. 
Okay, that shows you how evil we've become, how, how lax we've become in our presentations. Because, I mean, that was a time when a woman could not get on TV and show her bra. On national TV? Oh, that was a shame. But Victoria's Secret? That ain't no secret. There ain't no secret about her no more. We know all her business. <laughs> okay? That's what the secret was. <laughs> that was a <laughs> That's a <victory>. <laughs> <laughs> Mama Joe said the secret was Victoria was a man. Well, like I said, I don't know. I, I, I can't speak on those things I don't know. Amen. So at the end of the day, that was the secret, huh? Well, well, at the end of the day, Jesus. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Okay, I'm listening. We're not, a lot of people are not being taught, and they're lacking of the word of God, and it could stem from well, listen, their I'm, parents or something. I'm trying to tell you, all of it is from a lack of knowledge. That's why the devil fights so hard to keep y'all from Bible class, because if you don't know no better, you can't do better. Amen. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, so will, we be at, will, will we be at fault because we were lacking knowledge, and then we learn later? Um. There's, 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 there's a thing that's called um, the, the, the innocent, um, I'm trying to remember the law, Jesus. But when, when a person does something innocently, all right, then he gets a pass because he's ignorant. <clears throat> and so I think that there is some room, I don't know how God does it, but there is some room when you're ignorant about a thing that you do get some grace. Mm, amen. Thank you, you follow God. what I'm saying? Thank you. Once you know, then you're held accountable. Amen. You follow what I'm saying? Amen. And so at the end of the day, yes. Okay. Um, any more questions at this point? Because, you know, when you start talking about that kind of stuff, people get all uneasy. All right. All right. Let's re Y'all ready? We back at Genesis. All right. Um, we at verse 5. Right? All right. Let's read. God saw what? That the wickedness of man was great in the what? Was evil only continuously. How evil is that? Okay. And, and y'all, let's be, let's be honest. Even in our own presentation, in our own mind, in our own life today, how much do you really think about God? Don't, don't answer that. Don't answer that out loud. I'm just, it's a rhetorical question to process. How much do we really think about God? I mean, honestly. I'm, I'm not talking about when you get in trouble. Come on now. Yes. I'm talking about just daily. How you, how you love God and how, Lord, I'm just grateful to you for just waking me up in the morning. I am so thankful. You know what I'm saying? Just, just the processing of God. How, ma how, how many times do we actually do that? And I'm talking about without you being in trouble. It's just the mindset that, 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 that flows through you. You follow what I'm saying? This is what God is trying to create for us. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a relationship that is not just churchy on Sunday. It's a flow every day of my life. It is, it is how I live my life. It is how I think. It is how I breathe. It is how I process. Anytime I get ready to do something, Lord, what you think about this? I'm saying, and I know people call it crazy, but baby, listen, you cannot live separate from God. If you going if you gonna survive this evil, okay, you have to. You have listen. The Bible talks about men ought to always pray. It don't mean our Father which art in heaven. It means that I, my mind should always process stuff through God. All right, when I get ready to do something, Lord, should I turn left? Lord, should I stop? You know what I'm saying? Processing everything through God. God, help me. Do I make this? Which, which shoes should I get, Lord? Which outfit should I wear? Is this too tight? Is this not long enough? Is, see what I'm saying? And tell somebody, say, and that consciousness 
of God in your life helps you make the right choices for your life. Is this the right guy for me? Is this the right girl for me? Am I dating at the right time? You know, am I doing right in dating? Okay? Tell somebody, say, that's the process of the mind, and that's where we should be when we live life. We should be always asking God. Now watch this, y'all. Y'all say the Lord, y'all shepherd, right? So that means everything you do, God go before you. That's not making a decision to say, okay, Lord, I messed up. Come get me. That's saying, Lord, do I do it? And if he says no, I say, okay, let's move on. See what I'm saying? The Lord is my shepherd. He's in front of me. He's always leading me the way. Follow what I'm saying? And so at the end of the day, when you live like that, it helps you to make less mistakes. Okay? I ain't going to say you ain't going to make none. I ain't going to say you ain't going to make none. Thank you, Mother Cook. All right? Because at the end of the day, sometimes this flesh is just wretched. Okay? And I don't know. I don't know if y'all going to be true and honest with y'all selves. I love Jesus. He heard my cry. I try to stay in the Bible as much as I can. But this flesh that I have is wretched. Okay? And that, listen, and the more I realize how wretched my flesh is, I have to seek God constantly. I have to lay on my face with God because I know, man, if I don't keep this flesh under subjection, I ain't going to talk to fake people. If I don't keep this flesh under subjection, it can get ugly. Okay? And saints, your flesh is not your friend. Believe me when I tell you. This right here goes to show that if we don't keep God conscious in our lives, wickedness is our de destination. It will get to the place where we don't even think about God no more. All we think about is evil, that which is evil, how to do evil, who should I do evil to, and who with, should I do evil with. It's a constant thing because this flesh, somebody shout, is wretched. It's wretched. It is, man. And so we don't, we don't understand that these, these opportunities right here are so precious because what it does is like radiation to cancer. All day long, cancer is just running through your body. But when you come in here, it's like radiation. He began, it began to kill the, 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 the cells, Be begin to kill them, kill them off. You know, the more you stay up under the radiation, it kills off the cells so that it don't keep reproducing itself. That's what this is. That's what Sunday morning is. Is that when we get exposed to evil, we come in here and have a dose of God. And it kills the evil <laughs> that's reproducing itself. Because <laughs> it's always there. Even when you go to sleep, it's always there. Tell somebody, I say, but staying in the presence of God helps. God help me to keep this evil at bay. Okay? Because it will take over. How many know it will? It will take over, okay? And that's why you can't afford to just be a church member. You just can't be religious. You got to seek the will of God. You got to seek the face of God because this evil that we deal with is real every day of our lives. Do you hear me? All right? Let's read on because uh, some people get bored with that. But uh, it's for some of the people who know, I'm, who know what I'm talking about because at the end of the day, you know, if you don't acknowledge what you are, uh, you will probably end up making more mistakes than you like. Verse 7, let's read. 6, I'm sorry, 6. And in what? And repented the Lord that he had what? Made man on the earth and it... When God saw how evil we had become, he said, no, this ain't what I intended. Okay? And this is how you know God's heart for your life. Okay? Because when God looks at his evil, he's broken by it. Because that was never his intentions for your life. He, was, he intended for you to spend your life in joy and Eden, in pleasure, and in, in, in prosperity. That's what God intended. But we took a left turn down a road that's a one-way street. And God is broken by that. 
Because he wants more for us than we want for ourselves. Are y'all seeing me? Okay. And tell somebody, say, and the problem with it is, is that we have the power to make decisions and we don't even realize that we've gotten to the place where our decision making has become very poor because we keep listening to other people. I'll wait. Do y'all realize that most of the things that we do is not even us thinking? It's us following rules. Spoken rules, unspoken rules. And what we do is that when you break the rules, all of us in here who know the rule make you feel bad for breaking the rules, and therefore you come back and submit yourself to the rule. Are you listening to what's happening? It's called, it's called society, all right? And you don't even realize that you don't even process your own choice. You're following a, a list of rules, and you don't even recognize that you have been enslaved by the society in which you live. Because you ain't even thinking for yourself. They thinking for you. I'm listening. Our children don't even have a choice to make whether they want to be male or female. <laughs> they get gay on everything, everything, that even in the cartoon. Now, uh, ma ma um, Miss Joyce, listen, I don't know if people even see what's going on in the world, but ask yourself why they got all that stuff in middle school. They, listen, they teaching that stuff. In elementary school? It's in, okay, elementary. They're teaching it in elementary, okay? And y'all... Here's, here's the sad part about it. <clears throat> we don't even realize that as parents, we are the first teachers of our children. And we send our children to, to, to school to be taught. All right? Tell somebody, say, but the first education <clears throat> should come from the house. All right? No wonder they confuse. No wonder they don't know what sex they are because you didn't teach them at the house. You see what I'm saying? You can't, you can't expect a teacher to teach your children how to, how to be respectful. That should have been done at the, at the house. Okay? Got, we got any teachers in here? Okay? We got teach. How, how, how out of control are our children? Holy. I mean, in that space where I, I tell you. Oh. I tell y'all I work at a man learning community in Detroit Public Schools where our children are literally out of control. When I say out of control, I'm talking about, when you say respect, that don't exist. They will talk to you any type of way, curse, even to the point where they would talk to you in a sexual manner. You know, I, you know, I just had a situation like two weeks ago where a uh, well, fifth grader was talking about how she, what she was gonna do to our security guard. The fifth grader, this a grown man, 35 years old, and she talking about what she gonna do, how she gonna do it. Wonder where she learned that from. This girl is in the fifth grade. I wonder where she learned. I wonder where she learned that from. Uh, because we got too much social media, too much lack of parenting, and when we speak about how parents, our, our teachers, our teachers are here to teach a curriculum. When we talk about confusion, because God is not the author of it, when you ask those particular questions about sex and so forth and so on. When you talk about that non-binary, and I tell kids, only thing I know that's non-binary is starfish and worms. So those are the only thing that can reproduce with them themselves. But they're in that space of when they don't know, and then of course, as an educator, where you try to say, oh, where well, you're a boy or a girl, and they talk about pronouns, and I just got in trouble for that because in that space of, I tell them, your pronouns feed your confusion. My adjectives build my confidence. So we, in, we, in, we talk about parts of speech. And, and I say, when I see, when we talk about gender reveal, I only seen boy, girl. I never heard of a, a they, sis, a them. them. But in the Bible, they, them, and us, that's all demons. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Just saying. I'm just saying. And, and y'all, we have allowed our children to be exposed to this without education from home. Okay? And you can't blame the children. Because we have failed as parents. Y'all don't have to say amen. I already know. 
okay? We fail as parents, okay? And we have to take, we have to take time with our kids to educate them at home because how do they fight against what's being taught in school when you don't even teach them at home? Okay, yes. So, Pastor, what do we do as grandparents even? Who do we, Pastor? That's a whole nother. I lay hands. That's okay. Y'all don't know what that means, do you? I lay hands. I do. I lay hands. I, I got a little, little, I lay hands on. <laughs> she, she didn't think that was funny. <laughs> I lay hands. I, I lay hands. You know what I'm saying? And it don't take but one time to snatch them real good. Okay. All right. I know. I know. Okay. Call, call, call 911. What, what, 411? What's the number? Yeah, call it if you want to. Okay. Anyway. Anyway. So, <laughs> y'all got your Bibles? <laughs> y'all got your Bibles? Listen, man, we living in a world, like, listen, we living in a world where y'all, this is, this is why I don't try to, try to, you know, be so deep and try to go, we have to talk about what's, what's right before us, what's in our face, what we can control and how we can control it. And so at the end of the day, grandparents and parents, we just have to start, you know, if it was good enough for me, it's good enough for my children. Okay? The only reason that I'm half the man that I am because my mama didn't play with me. Okay? She was not my friend until I got grown. I said until I got grown. And, I'm, and I don't mean until I got 21. Now when I got grown, I got my own house, my own car, my own money, my own... That's when we became friends. Okay? But as long as I was living in her house, mm-mm, you still a boy. In this house, yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. All right, all right. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Is y'all ready? <laughs> oh, Jesus! I'm telling you, man. And we need to pray for our school system. Honest to God, um, uh, yes, ma'am. The teachers, the teachers have to go through a lot. They cannot even teach their curriculum because they got kids that are so out of order that they spend most of their time trying to keep the, the class in order. Okay? And y'all want to know why our, our, our kids don't learn nothing? It's because of that right there. Okay? And so, parents, if you hear me, and then let me ask you one more question. I know this is a dangerous thing to do, but I'm going to do it. Uh, how many parents participate in parents-teacher conference? Uh, okay. We have approximately at our school 423. This past one, we had it on the 20th of March. It was maybe like 48 out of 423, about 48. Listen, it's what's, it, and the reason I ask is what's happening. Let me, let me yeah. say this. Let, let me say this. I know, Miss Pat. Listen, let me say this. Let me say this. Your child don't even believe you care when you don't show up. Facts. Sometimes showing up, you might not even know what the, what the meeting is about. And sometimes the information they're giving you is so far out there, you don't even comprehend it. But the kid, when they see mama and daddy show up, saying mama and daddy care enough about me to take time out to come and see what's going on with me in this classroom. That's what your presence say. Even if you don't comprehend what the teacher telling you, tell somebody, say, just show up. I'll go one deeper and I'm going to be quiet. Even when we have meetings about poor behavior, this is the kicker right here, this is the kicker. Your child acting a fool, but the parent many times will accuse us of picking Bingo. the whole child. And I'm like, we not pick, your child picking on us. They doing, they cussing us out, doing, throwing desks and chairs and computers, and they would say, we picking on their child because we try to make it inconvenient for the parent because if your child gonna continue to disrupt, we gonna make it inconvenient for you, so you would make a change. Cause the kids know we can't touch them. They attend they you. They know that. And they, they know that. You can't touch me, but but they'll try to put hands on you, and I'd be like, no, don't do that, cause I'm still a grown man. That's why but, I couldn't be a teacher. That's yeah. why I couldn't. Oh, it's hard. That's why I forgot. And they don't pay us enough money. Lord, they don't pay us enough money. I couldn't be a teacher. I'm. I, that's why I be up there, right there, I, right there. I couldn't be a teacher. 
It's hard. Couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. That's why I pray and I, I bless God. I have great respect for you because I know you're a great educator. And uh, just being in that atmosphere is crazy. I'll about to say, come on, Miss Pat, because uh, people, people need to hear what's going on out here, man. No, I just wanted to piggyback on what he was saying. Out of that 48, yes, a high percentage that just showed up because they're annoyed because the child didn't get the grade they thought. Huh? Should, yeah, they want to get with the teacher. The 48 showed up because they want to get with the teacher. No, I said a high percentage of the 48 showed up because they want to get with the teacher because she didn't give the child the grade that they thought the child should have. So they're coming to confront the teacher. They so, so in other words, they're not coming to support the child. They're coming to confront the teacher? I said there's a high percentage of that number. I have been there, and security has had to come and remove the the parent because they were trying to check the teacher or oh, even wow. threaten the teacher as well. So I've, I've seen that a number of times. But the other thing I wanted to point out is Help that us, Jesus. That's all I, can I say. actually do evaluations for children from zero to three. And one of the questions I have to ask is, what sex is he or she? And they what do you mean? What's, you have to ask what sex they is. Because it's not written down. And so I need. I, to, can't you look at them and see what sick they is? Well, I have to. I have to get the answer Shh. from the parent, and they will tell me. I have had several times they've told me that I haven't chosen yet. Saints, listen. Don't wow, pray. Okay, because this is the stuff that is actually happening. In real life, I'm not. I'm not talking about in Bible days. I'm talking about in our days. Not, not listen. We need to be praying, and while we're praying, we need to make sure our children know. And when they are confronted, they are very clear about who they are. Oh, do you understand what I'm saying? Because you know, at the end of the day, you can't hold them accountable if you don't teach them yourself. Okay. Oh, it is what it is, baby. It's what it, 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 and, and somebody said it's in middle school. Elementary. elementary, yeah, she said elementary. That's right. All right, y'all ready? Y'all ready? That's because you know time has run out, right? Okay. Verse seven. All right, now we're going to have to stop on that because time has already run out. Listen, the Lord is upset because his creatures have gone astray. And I just want to know that if you look at your society today, I wonder how God feels right now. So I just wanted to say we just read that and we were having a discussion on how from zero she said from zero to three to three so isn't that the prime example of what we just read the destruction the destruction of oh grieve okay grieve yeah just yes okay it's what's happening right now okay it has gone just that bad, okay? And saints, that, and, 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 and I guess the reason that I'm highlighting this stuff for our understanding is because we cannot afford to just turn a deaf ear to what's going on around us, even though it may not be in your house. Tell somebody, say, it's in your neighborhood. You, you follow what I'm trying to tell you? And so even in your house, once you establish what's in your house, even when the kids come to your house, all right, you're going to have to help the parents down the street raise their kids. And what I mean by that, that if you, don't, if you can't sit and, and, and deal with the rules that I have in my house, don't come to it. And if you're going to be here, then you're going to follow these rules. Do you understand what I'm saying? And so at the end of the day, if they're in your house, then we have a moral obligation to help those children, all right, to get what they need, okay? 
Because, y'all, listen, some of, the, some of the greatest lessons I've learned was not from my mom and my daddy. It was from the ladies and the men down the street who loved me enough not to just turn a deaf ear to what I was doing, but they had chastised me. And then when they chastised me, they took me home to Pearly. And guess Pearly didn't try to check them. Pearly said, well, thank you very much. And went in there and beat my butt again. And then, listen, listen. Listen, if you ever want to get beaten, beaten tell, tell your mama that, that, that the grown person is lying. <laughs> tell me Miss Pat is lying. That's another beat. No, that's another beat down on the top of the beat down I just got. <clears throat> Don't you ever tell me that a grown person is lying on you. Now, that was Pearly Lawson. Tell somebody I said that was back then. But listen, why, <clears throat> my question to you is why come it can't be now? Because they'll they get you when you put your hands on their kids. It takes a village to raise a child. Yeah. Give her that mic. Let us talk. My girlfriend's kids went to a Catholic school with a nun. Do you know the mamas came up and beat up the nun because the nun chastised them? That's where we are. It's sad. See. Somebody shout mental illness. <laughs> Y'all. In our days, it took a village to raise a child. Huh? Not, it, in our days, it took a village to raise a child. Yes, ma'am. In our days, yeah. you put your hand on somebody's kids, they coming at you with their gun. Don't touch my child. Keep your child at home now. My grandkids don't come to my house because they don't like the way I live. Too bad. They ain't listening to all that music. They ain't playing games all day long. No way. Bring your gifts to stop me. Lord, help us out here today. All right, we got we got one more hand over here. We got. Yeah, I'm a country boy. Even in the north, but my problem is everybody keeps saying our children are doing this. Our children. First of all, get your community in order. Because if you let Mr. So-and-so know he can check your child, and I'm not going to check him, it makes a difference. But in my neighborhood, I don't care. Because if you're doing something wrong, I'm going to check you. Let your mama come to me, and I might have to check her. But until we start holding our own people accountable for what's going on in this world, nobody can't change it but us. Well, and, and you'll say, well, they won't let me. They'll let you because they'll get the message. I don't want, I don't want your child around mine. And, and then you start teaching them. You can't hate on them because you don't know what they have been taught. Right. And it, until we start loving on each other, stop complaining about each other, stop hating each other, this is going to continue, and it's all by design. It is by design. And we have to stop and recognize, well, you know what? She's not so bad. She wasn't taught this, so let me take her under my wing and try to show her something. Some look. I live on Outer Drive, and it was a young black woman. She had five sons. Went to black club meetings and they always complained about her. I said, so if any of y'all ever go to that woman? That Absolutely happened, not. I can oh, tell you no. that. Well, then you don't know what her plight is. Absolutely. So we have to start becoming, as older people, we are now elders, getting more involved. Yes, ma'am. We have to do that because this is all we, got children, all we have left. That's it. And if a two-year-old does something and somebody laughs and say they don't know about it, you're lying. They know when they're six months when they're doing something. I hope y'all listening to this. I hope y'all listening to this. All right. We as parents, has to, we have to get involved. Okay. Yes. Young people are in the grave today. Mm -hmm. they, they, in, they in jail or in the grave because of lack of discipline. Yes, ma'am. There's yes, a lack of discipline. The first command with promise. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days might be long. The first command with promise. Okay? Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> I'm just saying, y'all, at the end of the day, um, um, you know, we have, we have a lot. And, 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 and the reason that I'm putting this out here is because what I need folks to do is be alarmed by what's going on around us because we come to church and act like this stuff ain't happening. Tell somebody, say, listen, just because we are saved and satisfied, tell somebody, say, does not give us the 
uh, um, the, the privilege of not um, um, being responsible, all right, for what goes on around us, okay? We can't help everybody, but we can help somebody. Hello? Now, if you get, you get one of them parents that's, that's to the place where they're ignorant, they don't want to, then you know you can't help that. But there is a parent that needs some help, and they would welcome your help, all right? If you are a person that's straight up and you want to do right, blah, 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 and we communicate, say, hey, you know, if your kid come down here, this, these are the things that we're going to do, all right, and these, uh, this is how I run my household, you know what I'm saying? They would welcome that help, all right, because how many know it's hard raising a kid by yourself? How many know that? It's hard raising a kid by yourself, okay? That's why it takes the village to raise a kid, man, and so we just got to come together because our kid... Uh, uh, they are in, they're in terrible shape. You know what I'm saying? Yes. I just wanted to say, Pastor, uh, I was picking up a tutor class one time with math, but I had a young lady in the class. With, uh, she wanted to be a man. So uh, I told her, you know, I mentioned to her, but God makes no mistakes. Amen. So why would you, you want to be a man? I said, he makes no mistakes. Then the tutor told her, you know, she's young. She 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 don't know any better, but she's she's old, a much older person, and she says she she wants to have an operation. She wants to be a man. I mean, it, it it just shows how 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 desperate and confused we are. Okay, and uh, I don't make fun of of people who struggle like that. Uh -huh. I pray. Okay, uh, I pray for them. I I love I love all of them. Okay but I do recognize that the devil has misled them. You see what I'm saying? And so uh, when it comes to people who um, choose to, you know, flow that way, I don't treat them with any less respect because if you meet, they, are, they, they have beautiful souls. They're just misled. And that's how we have to view them and try to help them if we can. Uh, and the first thing that you do to anybody or with anybody is you sow yourself to be friendly. Are y'all listening to what I'm saying? All right, because how many understand that your words don't mean nothing until, I, until you begin to mean something to me? Did you hear what I said? Uh, there it is. I know it. I'm a man. Okay. But the point I'm trying to get to you is this, is that when you, you don't become effective to somebody until the somebody you're trying to reach respects you. You follow what I'm saying? And so you have to go into a person's life not judging them, not talking about they are all wrong, they got it all twisted. You just go in to love them for who they are, meet them where they are, all right? And as you grow in that relationship, they will start asking you questions. And God will open a door so that you can minister to them. You see what I'm saying? Because they don't feel like you're judging them. Now they feel like you're trying to help them. Is that making any sense? We come in, we come in fire. Just killing everybody. Tell somebody, I said, that ain't how you do stuff. Okay? You have to learn how to love people right where they are. Because at the end of the day, we didn't all, we didn't all have it when, when we started. Somebody had to teach us too, right? Okay? And so we have to do the same thing for other people. We have to show that grace for other people because, you know, everybody, listen, and I'm, I'm, ending, I'm ending on this note. If common sense was common, everybody would have it. Is that right? Okay. And I said that because we automatically, we don't realize how gifted we are because the, the, the wisdom that we have all right, is actually that, wisdom from God. And we think that everybody think like we think, and they don't, all right? And because we have a certain wisdom, then we have an obligation to share that wisdom with people who come into our presence. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because if common sense was common, everybody would have it. Everybody don't have it, right? We see it every day, right? So it is our obligation to take what wisdom we have to share with those who don't know. Is that making any sense? Okay. And so at the end of the day, I'm going to have to cut it off right here. And um, I, I meant to get to um, chapter 7, but didn't make it at all. So 
We'll pick it up uh, next uh, Wednesday if the Lord say the same. All right? All hearts and minds are clear. Thank you for your participation. Amen. Because this is what we come to do is learn, right? Amen. Amen. Bless God. All right, let's stand to our feet. Bless God for all of you. Thank God for um, your presence in this place today. Um, and we want to continue to pray for this church, pray for the, um, the, our children, pray for our school system. Amen. Uh, especially our teachers. Amen. Uh, and so at the end of the day, uh, just, just, just keep that on your prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this privilege, this opportunity, Lord, just to come into your presence. We pray for our community. We pray for our children. We, rec we recognize and have identified that our children are going through a chaotic moment, a chaotic society. And God, we pray that you would teach us as the children of God what we can do to make things better. We bless and ask you to watch over every teacher, every child that goes to school, keep them safe from all predators. We ask God that you would give our teachers the insight and the wisdom to teach to, to minister to our kids and to give, give them what they need in order for them to become productive students uh, in the world in which we live. God, I pray that as we leave from this place today that you would teach us as a people of God how to love those we come in contact with. We are not in judgment against anybody, but we're trying to love everybody. And so God, help us to know how to present ourselves in this world that they will see a difference in our hearts, in our character, in the way we think, in the way we act that they will know that you are our God and we are there and we are your children. Cover us with your blood as we dismiss from this place but never from your presence. Go with us and stand by us until we meet again. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God.